Hey you guys, and welcome to my channel, or welcome back if you're returning. Today I want to talk about something that we underutilize way too much. Today I want to talk about the cornerstone of manifestation itself, and that is your imagination. And more specifically, how we can begin to utilize our imagination in a way to radically transform our lives. So if manifestation and conscious creation are topics that you are interested in learning more about, then definitely don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And if you enjoy my content and want to help this channel, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. If you are interested in any of my resources, such as one-on-one -on -one coaching, my workshops, or my new coaching program, I have links to all that information down in the description box below. So don't forget to check that out. And the reason that I want to talk about this today is because this truly is the entire foundation upon which manifestation, conscious manifestation, rests. Your imagination is the most powerful laboratory, it is the most powerful center of creation one could ever fathom. And yet, this is highly underutilized. So we're going to go back to the basics today. We're going to go back to Law of Assumption 101 and talk about imagination. And what truly really inspired me to make this video was when I was talking to a client the other day, she described that she was not really hearing many people talk about imagination in terms of manifesting your desires. And this truly blew my mind because, again, this is the foundation of it. This is how we go about creating our reality. Whether we're conscious of it or not, all of it is being utilized through our imagination. If you are a follower of the Law of Assumption and Neville Goddard, you know this to be true because this is what Neville talked about extensively. And not just Neville Goddard, many, many New Age authors and mystics speak about this in great length because this is your center of power and it cannot be stressed enough that this is how we create everything that we encounter everything that we experience everything that we observe all of it so enough yapping let's dive into the video first off what do i mean when i talk about imagination for those that are new to the law or for those that were maybe unaware before your imagination is what creates your reality it is what you imagine or what you believe and deem to be true that gives birth to everything that we experience. We use our imagination to change the beliefs and assumptions that we hold. Everything that you see and encounter in your day to day was once just a figment of somebody's imagination. Everything from the chair that you are sitting on to the screen that you are looking at this right now was once just an idea in somebody's imagination. The imagination is literally the workshop in which all of your plans and all of your outcomes and all of your encounters and circumstances are birthed. Whatever it is that you desire, whatever that impulse is that you feel the urge to act on is given shape and form through the aid of your imagination. It has been said by countless mystics and new thought authors and leaders that man's only limitation lies in the development and use of his imagination. And this is 1000% true. Because we do not understand how our imagination works and ultimately how to utilize it in our favor, we are instead unconsciously and unwillingly creating all sorts of fiascos and circumstances that we don't want. Now before we dive into how to utilize our imagination, I have to clear up a very common misconception when people hear that word imagination. Many people who follow the Law of Assumption or Neville Goddard have become confused with the conception of imagination. To many, when they hear the word imagine, their mind goes to visualize. Basically, what a lot of people have gotten confused is they are linking those two terms together, visualization and imagination. For some, their sticking point becomes that because they struggle with visualization, they automatically assume that they can't imagine or they can't use imaginal acts. But these two terms are not synonymous with each other. Visualization is just one aspect of your imagination out of many 
many aspects because the truth is you are using your imagination all the time, all throughout the day, when you are thinking, when you are solving problems, when you are forming new ideas, when you are making decisions, when you are having internal conversations, all of this is the utilization of imagination. It is all the things that are taking place in your internal world, the inner workings of the mind, basically. So when you hear me talk about imagination or using your imagination to manifest, I'm not strictly talking about visualizing in the state akin to sleep. Because this was a method that was so commonly referenced by Neville, people have mistaken these two terms to mean the same thing, and it's not. So I just had to make that abundantly clear that when, when I talk about imagination, I don't mean strictly visualization, because I know that that's a hangup for many people. There is a distinction between the two. Visualization is one aspect out of many, many, many. So what is this imagination I keep hearing about and how do I use it to manifest? Well, first it's important to understand that we can actually break this down. There are two different camps of imagination or two different types of imagination that we use or that we are capable of using. Well, truth be told, there are many types of imagination, but for this video, I'm going to stick to these two because this is what we use most predominantly. And those two types of imagination are synthetic imagination and creative imagination. And this was a concept that was spoken about most often by New Thought author Napoleon Hill, who wrote the incredibly popular book to this day, Think and Grow Rich. The way that Napoleon Hill described it, man has two forms of imagination that he is capable of using. The first faculty, which is synthetic imagination, is when we arrange old concepts, ideas, and information into new combinations. Through this faculty of imagination, we're rearranging old ideas and plans and concepts, but we're not really creating anything new here. We're still very much within the bounds of what we feel is possible and logical and reasonable to us. This basically just works with the materials of our experience and what fits into our view of the world. Now with creative imagination, this is where we can begin to really tap into the unlimited potential that we have. Through use of creative imagination, that finite limitation that is man, that is human, can tap into that infinite potential of awareness. Napoleon Hill went on to say that this was the direct link or direct communication that we have to the infinite source of all there is, otherwise known as God. And we begin to tap into our creative imagination when we start to go outside the box and when we start to go outside of what the norms and the usual routines and all of our findings and our beliefs, when we can get outside of those boundaries, that's when the creative imagination muscles really begin to stretch. It's essentially when we go completely off the map and just begin to play with any of these ideas or any of these desires in imagination. With the use of creative imagination, we begin to really understand that there are no rules here. There are no norms and ideas that we have to follow based on previous experience and previous circumstance and that old story. We get to go completely off the charts if we so want. And it's through this faculty the faculty of creative imagination, that we start to receive answers. And they usually come to us in the form of inspiration or hunches or eureka moments, epiphanies, and things of that sort. Have you ever had those moments where you are just hit upside the head with a realization or an epiphany that comes from seemingly out of nowhere? Yeah, that's the creative imagination. And in fact, that is our direct source to infinite potential, or all that is. And as you probably already guessed, it is through the creative imagination that we can really begin to tap into 
our true infinite sources and our true infinite self. Now for the vast majority of us, we are almost all the time using our synthetic imagination or that repetition of the familiar, that old story, all of the experiences and ideas that we have previously recorded. It's taking a lot of stuff that we have picked up along the way and essentially just rearranging it, but nothing new is coming out of it. Hence why it can feel like we get stuck in cycles and patterns because we don't stray too far from what we feel is normal to us in imagination. And this encompasses a variety of things, including the thoughts that you have every day, the decisions that you make every day, the reactions that you have every day, what you entertain, what you dwell on. All of these things, all of these factors are coming from imagination, but primarily most of us use that synthetic version. Basically, it's a regurgitation of what we've always done. But why is it that we only primarily use old ideas or things that are familiar to us? Why can't we go in and play with the creative imagination? Or why don't we do that? Why is it that we so often only seem to play with these old concepts and ideas instead of forming new ones or playing around with these ideas and concepts that maybe we have not tried before? Well, in short, it's how we've been conditioned. And this kind of goes back to the idea of when we were kids and really going back to the way that we used our imagination when we were kids. See, as children, we always utilized our imagination. We were constantly building new worlds and going to all sorts of different places, coming up with all sorts of unique and crazy ideas because everything was new to us. We didn't already have these preconceived notions and these set ideas of how things are. So as children, it comes quite naturally to use primarily the creative imagination. As we got older, we learned through our parents, teachers, society, that we shouldn't keep using our imagination in that way. At some point, it became frowned upon. We were taught to be more realistic and more practical and to stop dreaming so much. As a consequence, we became less and less adept with our creative imagination. And I said it before on my channel, and I'm gonna to continue to say that we should always be thinking and looking at the imagination like a muscle. The more it's used, the stronger it gets. So ever since the age of about young adolescence, we have not really been exercising this muscle a whole hell of a lot. And just like a physical muscle that doesn't get exercise, it weakens and it gets more and more challenging to access and to tap into. This is why it seems much more challenging to us as adults to really begin to go outside of the box in imagination and to create these whole new worlds where there are no conditions and there are no rules and where anything is possible. This is a struggle for many people because we're not used to it. We're no longer acclimated to doing so. And for that reason, we continue to fall back on our synthetic imagination or the same old, same old. The good news, however, is that just like with a muscle, you can begin to exercise your creative imagination again. You can begin to practice building those new worlds, going off the map and really capturing that place and that feeling of your wish fulfilled. And that is the entire point of these teachings. And it is the cornerstone of manifestation because it is through that creative imagination and going past what we feel is possible or realistic, completely suspending that disbelief and forming that impression. That is how we begin to see things unfold in the 3D world. So how do we go about doing this? How do we go about exercising this muscle of imagination? Well, the best way to get started is to make use of your synthetic imagination and building up your conscious thinking to its greatest capacity. Basically, spend time every day just thinking. Start thinking and planning your future from the place of your desired outcome. Just start thinking about it. 
So let's say, for example, that you want to get out of the corporate nine to five world and start your own business, but you have so many fears and attachments to the idea that your business would fail or that there's too much competition out there or that fear that comes from the idea of losing the security of a nine to five job but perhaps you are miserable, you hate your job, you hate this nine to five grind, and you really want to set out and build your own business and start teaching something you are passionate about. First thing that we wanna do is to start just thinking about these ideas. What would you wanna teach? Or what would be the services that you wanna provide? What would be your target audience? Or the demographics that you're trying to help? Is it something that you can do all online or would you need a studio or a brick and mortar building? How much money would you want to make every month or every year? Would you have employees or would it be a solo thing? Is it something that you want to do while traveling? Is it something that you want to travel the world to teach people or would it be from primarily online? Just start thinking of that new business outcome. Start to get familiar with every nook and cranny of what this would look like. Use the synthetic imagination for this. So this is the the conscious thinking of it. And you can use the same premise and idea for anything that you're trying to manifest. If you're trying to manifest a specific person, think about all the ways in which that relationship would look like. Is there something that you want the two of you to do together? Is there a common interest that you share that you would want to also share with the world? What would you want to do together? What would you want to accomplish? Is there places that you want to travel? Are there dreams and inspirations that both of you share that you want to reach together? Start really painting this picture in your mind by just thinking about all of the concepts and ideas that you have already formed or already are aware of. Again, the synthetic imagination is just creating new ideas from previous circumstances and things you've already learned and known. So knowing what you know about that person and knowing what you know about you whatever that looks like, start seeing what you would like to do together. Even if that's just moving into a new home together and starting a family. How many kids do you want? Do you want a dog? Do you want a cat? What kind of house would you want to get with them? Start to paint the picture in your mind of what this looks like. And you can start doing this consciously. All of these things that you're doing are starting to wake up those imagination muscles. The more that you play with these ideas consciously, the more familiar they will become and the more familiar they will start to feel. And this is how you begin to indirectly affect your creative imagination. Now to exercise the creative imagination, that is also better known to us that study the law of assumption as SATs or imagining in the state akin to sleep. This is where we get into a groggy, sleepy-like state and begin to picture the things that we desire in our imagination. Now, I want to be clear on this, that it does not have to be a full-fledged scene if visualization is something that does not come naturally to you. It does not have to be picture-perfect in 4K definition in order to become a subconscious impression. But ultimately, the aim with the creative imagination is to make that subconscious impression, to seal that new idea in our mind, and in doing so, a 3D reality. Now I want to stress the importance of understanding that this is a practice. I know for most of us, when it comes to something that we desire, especially the things that we deeply desire, it is easy to get impatient. It is easy to fall into the trap of, Where is it? What am I doing wrong? Why is it not here yet? And so on and so on. This is the most common trap that we fall into and ultimately what delays our manifestation from materializing. Just practice a little bit every day with both the synthetic imagination and also the creative imagination and you will begin to see and feel the results naturally. And the reason we want that drowsy state It's because in this window, in this time frame, when we are not alert and awake, but not fully asleep and unconscious, it's this window that the subconscious mind is much more ripe for impression. And the ability to do so without force is at its peak. So we're playing and we're practicing both in the day to day and in that drowsy state 
either before bed or in meditation as we're deeply relaxed, this is how you begin to exercise that muscle of your imagination. And I cannot stress the importance of this aspect. The reason that people find so much struggle around this is because they're trying to utilize something that they have not utilized in a very long time. It would be the equivalent of trying to run a 5k marathon when you have never ran a day in your life. It's going to feel impossible to do. But bit by bit, as we begin to stretch and exercise this muscle of our imagination and really tap into the powers of the imagination, this is where we find the unlimited potential that exists, the infinite source of all things and all that ever is, was, and ever will be. There are no limits in imagination. You can go be and do anything you want. And the more that we come to trust this, and the more that we get familiar with this, and the more that we really begin to exercise this, that is how you ultimately manifest anything that you want. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you are interested in any of my other resources, I have links down below to my one-on-one -on -one coaching, my blog, my social channels, my podcast, my workshops, all that good stuff. Got a ton of resources down there for you guys, so don't forget to check it out. Also, don't forget to check out my other videos on this channel. Don't forget to check out my Manifestation Fundamentals playlist. Each video is a different topic, but it all pertains in how to manifest the best life possible. So until we meet again, you guys, as always, take care, be well, and never forget how powerful you truly are. Happy manifesting, guys.